husband we will rejoice and be glad in it this is the day the day that the Lord has made good morning my dear friends in the Lord the Lord is good and all the time amen in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of God, the Father Almighty, the love of Jesus Christ, His Son, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, we gather together this morning to give thanks to God for the gift of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has revealed to us his merciful heart as we celebrate today divine mercy we want to give thanks to God for the many graces that we have received from God the grace of mercy forgiveness and all and today I like to pray very specially for one of our friends father-in-law who is suffering from a very severe kind of sickness. But we pray that God's mercy may shine upon him and may grant him a speedy recovery, may stand by the family so that they stay together, consoled and supported, and walk through this, and so at the end be able to give thanks to God. We pray same for all those who are going through difficulties and challenges in their lives, that the mercy of God may reach down upon us. Those of us who are struggling with faith, like Thomas, those struggling with sin, our weaknesses, that the mercy of God may be sufficient for us, that we may experience that compassion of God that may lead us to true healing, wholesomeness, restoration, and recovery, and true repentance and conversion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now invite the children and their teachers to go for the children liturgy. No teachers today? Okay. So children, stay in, okay? That's okay. So let us call to mind our sins and be sincerely sorry for them. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what forms they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Now we please sit.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of believers was united, heart and soul. No one claimed for his own use anything that he had, as everything they owned was held in common. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great power, and they were all given with great respect. None of their members was ever in want, as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them to present it to the apostles. It was then distributed to any members who might be in need. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The response is, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has, has no end. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the, the Lord, Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love has no end. Give, Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The Lord's right hand has triumphed, his right hand raised me up. I shall not die, I shall live and recount his deeds. I was punished, I was punished by the Lord, but not doomed to die. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The stone which the bil builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This is the day, this day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give, Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, Lord for he is good, for his love has no end. A reading from the letter, the first letter of St. John. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God, and whoever loves the Father that begot him loves the child whom he begets. We can be sure that we love God's children if we love God himself and do what he has commanded us. This is what loving God is keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not difficult because anyone who has been begotten by God has already overcome the world. This is the victory over the world, our faith. Who can overcome the world? Only the person who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus Christ, who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as another witness, since the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. said, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Hallelujah. 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 
The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you. And he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you return, they are returned. Thomas called twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, we have seen the Lord, he answered, unless I see that hole, unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, my dear friends in the Lord. The Lord is good and all the time. Amen. Where should I start? Okay, I'll start somewhere, right? Today, we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. This celebration was inaugurated by the then Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, in April 2000, on the occasion of the canonization of that woman. Thank God we have our painting in the church, that Polish woman, Maria Faustina. She was a nun, and Jesus appeared to her over a hundred times. She had visions of Jesus, messages from Jesus. There's a big book like that, Diary of Faustina, where everything, her encounters with the Lord was recorded. It was on one of those occasions that the Lord Jesus Christ directed her on how to paint this picture the Divine Mercy picture, which I also have on my chasuble. Jesus directed her to paint this and to sign it, Jesus, I trust in you. This picture 
Jesus directed her should be put in a very special place, either in your house, in the church, in the chapel, and venerated. And taught her how to say the Divine Mercy Chaplet, which is very popular. And we offer that prayer every three o'clock. But if you don't have time at three o'clock, perhaps that is your working hour, you can say that prayer anytime with commitment and devotion. Among the many promises that Jesus made for those who are devoted to the divine mercy is that if the divine mercy chaplet is offered at the bedside of a dying person, that person will experience his mercy. That person will be saved from going to hell. His mercy will be sufficient to save him from damnation. I have personally been a beneficiary of devotion to divine mercy. I don't want to tell you because I've told you this story before, but when we come back at three o'clock today for the celebration of divine mercy, I will share that story. And in fact, I will invite anyone in the church at that time who has an experience of his mercy and graces and favor to also share. So today the church invites us to contemplate on God's mercy, how deeply merciful God is. Maria Faustina uses the word unfathomable, that God's mercy is unfathomable, unimaginable. It is beyond our human understanding how deep God's mercy is. And when we look at our personal lives individually, we will see God's mercy reflecting at different times, at different stages of our lives. When we look at the human history, the human story presented to us in the Bible, we will see God's mercy show clearly at creation. God created man at the end after he had put everything in place. God then created man to enjoy. And as the psalmist says, that God put all things under the feet of man. What is man that you care for him? Mortal man that you love him. You have made him little less than a God. With glory and honor you crown him. Put all things under his feet. So man was created as the, as the crown of creation. And God handed over everything in the garden of Eden to Adam. And if it enjoy everything but of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, thou shalt not eat. And just imagine how stubborn we are till today. Imagine how many trees were in that garden, perhaps one billion trees, perhaps one million trees, or even if there were 100 trees. It's 99, but don't touch this. And that is the one man was eager to touch. I'm sure you experienced that with your children, right? You give him five pieces of chocolate. This is yours. Don't touch this. What do they do? They go for that one. That one you say, don't touch. That's the one they want to touch. <laughs> So we are still like that. You don't blame Adam and Eve because if we were there, we would have done the same thing. So, they ate that. But God did not abandon them. God came back to them. And it was on that occasion that God promised his son from the womb of the woman will come an offspring who will be an enemy of the serpent that deceived you. And that offspring will crush the head of the serpent. And that was the promise of Jesus, the Messiah, who crushed the head of the serpent by the power of his resurrection, which we celebrated last weekend. And last weekend, we also saw God's mercy showing forth in the life of Jesus Christ on Holy Thursday night. 
How many people did the priest wash their feet here? Did you count? On Holy Thursday night, how many people? How many? Twelve. So those twelve people that Jesus washed, or that the priest washed their feet, represented the twelve apostles that Jesus washed their feet on the night of his last supper. Which means, listen to this, which means that Judas Iscariot was one of the twelve that Jesus washed his feet. Am I right? And you know Judas Iscariot? You know him, right? Who was he? The traitor. The one who betrayed Jesus. And do you know that Jesus knew that he was the one to betray him? You know that? Would you have washed his feet? Would you? Would you wash the feet of someone that you know is going to betray you? Would you wash the feet of someone who tells lies about you? I wouldn't. I would say, no, I'm not going to wash your feet, man, you are, because I know what is on your mind. But that's Jesus Christ. That's how merciful he is till today. Jesus washed the feet of his traitor, the feet, the feet of his betrayer. And not only that, again, listen to this. Judas Iscariot shared food from the same dish with Jesus. Do you know that? He said, the man who is going to dip his bread into my dish, he is the one. He's the one who will betray me. That's how merciful, that's how patient God is with me, with you, with all of us. Today, in the gospel, Jesus demonstrates mercy again. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, that is the day of the, of the resurrection, in the evening of last Sunday, Jesus appeared to his apostles. They were all in the same room. The doors were shut, and Jesus suddenly appeared to them. Peace be with you. He showed them his hands and his side. He breathed on them. And the apostles, were, they rejoiced when they saw the Lord. But Thomas the twin was not there. And so when he came back, you can imagine the joy, the disciples, you know, they laid off the information. Oh, Thomas, Jesus was here, we saw him. He said, no. Unless I see him myself. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands. Unless I put my finger into the holes that the nails made. Unless I put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. I refuse to believe. Let me speak that word again and listen to the words again. And let your mind be very open to those words. I refuse to believe. Do you hear the words of Thomas echo in our century? Do you hear it? I refuse to believe. Do you hear it? Can you hear it? No, listen, you hear. You hear that on the streets, on our high streets. You will hear it in the classrooms. You will hear that in our parliaments. You will hear that in the boardrooms, you will hear that from your neighbor's houses. You will hear even in your house, you will hear, listen to it again. I refuse to believe. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Am I confusing you? So can you hear that word? That sentence, I refuse to believe. See, even today, the words of Thomas are still spoken by men and women of our time, by our children. In the classrooms, 
They speak the word. In a parliament, they speak them. In the boardroom, as they sit to decide, they speak them. I refuse to believe. Not because men and women and young people do not know about Jesus. They do. But they do what? They refuse to believe. Yes. They refuse. That is why we see the things happening the way they are happening. Because they refuse to believe. In Jesus as the Lord. But let us see how merciful Jesus is. Eight days after, what did Jesus do? He came back to Thomas. Jesus came back just because of one person. That is what Jesus, Jesus loves us individually. Jesus does not love us as members of St. Elphes Church or parish. No, he loves us one by one because he knows us by name. He knows the number of hair on our head. He knows all of us. So when we err, when we are going astray, when we are getting lost, Jesus comes to us just as he came to save Thomas, who was drowning in the ocean of his doubts, who was walking into great darkness of disbelief. Jesus, the light of the world, came back to Thomas. That is why on the second occasion Jesus came, he addressed him, Thomas, look at me. Come. Look at my hands. Look at the mark of the nails. Come, put your finger here. Give me your hand, Thomas. Thomas. Put it here. And what did Thomas do? He exclaimed, broken. The power of the resurrection, the power of God's love and mercy, the power of the light that Jesus is broke the darkness of his doubts and he cried out, my Lord and my God. Today, my dear friends, Jesus keeps coming back to us in our darkness, in our doubts. Jesus comes back. He comes to save us. He comes to save us in our homes. He comes to save us in our society. He comes to save us in the church. He comes to save us in the schools. Every time we listen to the gospel, Jesus speaks to us like Thomas, come to me, look at me, look at the marks. I bore this for you. It was because of you that I was nailed to the cross. Can't you see my side? Look at the mark of my mercy. These are the wounds on my back that I bore because of my mercy for you. Jesus continues to reveal himself to us. Can't we see him? And lastly, my friends, hanging on the cross, having been nailed to the cross, Jesus looked down and saw the man who nailed him to the cross and he raised his eyes to heavens and cried, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That prayer of Jesus echoes today. That prayer of Jesus was not simply for those men who nailed him to the cross, but that prayer of Jesus was and is for me, for you, for all of us in our sin. Every time we sin, the Lord Jesus Christ to the Father. Father, forgive Father Patrick, for he knows not what he does. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yes, the Lord Jesus continues to cry for mercy. Very soon we are going to profess the creed and we are going to say that he was, 
He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. He sits at the right hand of the Father. He is interceding for us continuously from the right hand of the Father. He's praying and crying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Yes, we do not know what we do because if we were to know the depth of God's mercy, if we were to know the depth of God's love, if we were to experience the unfathomable, the unimaginable, the inexplicable love of God and mercy of God, we wouldn't sin. And today we pray that God may visit us in a very special way. And like Thomas, we may be open enough to let our hearts be broken. That our darkness may be overpowered by the light of Christ. So that like him we can cry out, my Lord and my God. The Lord is good. And all the time. Amen. My dear friends, let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends, let us pray to Christ, our merciful Savior, who died and rose again and is seated at the right hand of God, interceding for us. The response is, my Lord and my God, have merciful on us. My Lord and my God, have mercy on us. For the church that the power of the risen Christ may guard all her leaders, the Pope, the bishops, priests, and others, that they may present to the faithful the face of the divine mercy of Jesus. For this we pray. My Lord and my God, have mercy on us. For the leaders of powerful nations, that they may be compassionate in their considerations of others, weaker nations, and fair to the poorer countries of the world. For this we pray. My Lord and my God, have mercy on us. For those struggling with doubts in matters of faith, that their doubts may not lead to laxity, but like Thomas, they may be humbly come to acknowledge the Lord Jesus as the Lord and Saviour. For this we pray. My Lord and my God, have mercy on us.
For the poor, the needy, and the marginalized people of our world, that the Christian community may come to their assistance as the early Christians did by sharing what they have with them with respect and love. For this we pray. My Lord and my God, have mercy on us. For our parish community, that though completely undeserving of our such a gift of grace, God's divine mercy will have its effect in us, freeing and opening us to love him ever more deeply. For this we pray. My Lord and my God, have mercy on us. We pray for those who have recently died, especially Bridget Ellen O'Donnell and Baby Lina Bruchakani, that God may grant them a share in the resurrection banquet and console those they have left behind. For this we pray. My Lord and my God, have mercy on us. Let us present our private intentions to the Lord. We ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we pray. Hail Mary, Hail Mary. full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Prayer for vocations. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of our priests. Help us in their vocation and become instruments of your love and grace. Send your Holy Spirit to give courage and guidance to all those you are calling to the priesthood, to your connect and religious life in our archdiocese. May those called hear your voice and respond wholeheartedly to become the person you created them to be. Heavenly Father, form us all in the likeness of your Son, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, so that we may love you more deeply and serve you more faithfully. We ask this through Christ, your Son, the Eternal High Priest. God, our compassionate Father, mercifully accept the petitions we place before you and grant our humble needs. Help us to be merciful ourselves that we may obtain your mercy. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. We pray of a tree. Can we have the children come on the altar, please, like you usually do for the offertory hymn? You're going to sing, I want to build my life. The words are on the screen. And Amy and Sophie are going to lead it for us.
Father, we thank you for your many gifts to us, your children. We humbly ask you Our to second offer offer to offer him is 603. Thank you. 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 My dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land people exalts in your praise. And even the he heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, Paul and Philip, his auxiliaries, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life. May present glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed of and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who lives and lives forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. My dear friends, behold the Lamb of God. This is Jesus Christ. This is he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed indeed are all of us who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You shall come under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ remain with us and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
the body of Christ, 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 the body of Christ. Our first communion hymn is 938, Soul of My Savior. Our second hymn is My God Loves Me, and the words will be on the screen. The Body of Christ. The Body of Christ. The Body of Christ. The Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. One of the ladies coming in front. Where? Is it still there? Uh, somebody step on it. Go on. Uh, it's okay. Go 
Don't worry, don't worry. Take care of it, that's all. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. May we please sit for a couple of minutes. Thank you. It's the first weekend of the month of April. May those born in April please stand. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, may the good Lord bless you, may the good Lord bless you, may the good Lord bless you all, may the good Lord bless you. Happy birthday to you all. May the good Lord bless you, protect you, provide your needs, and grant success to the works of your hands. Amen. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday, and at 3 o'clock, we invite you back to church for our celebration of the Divine Mercy um, service. We shall have exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. We shall have confessions. We shall have prayer of consecration. We shall have the veneration of the image of divine mercy. And we shall bless ourselves. So that's what we shall have by three o'clock today. The Alpha Youth Course Okay, yeah. We are calling all year sevens, eights, and anyone interested in starting confirmation classes this year to join us for Alpha Youth starting on Friday, the 19th of April at 6 30 in Ellis Hall. The Ellis Hall is the old church. The course is a nine week program. It is highly recommended. Registration opens now because the QR codes are at the doors. For more details, please check the parish website or the Facebook 
page of the parish. The parish bingo was held last evening and it was a very fun field, very thrilling um, experience and joyful. We all celebrated those of us who were there and we want to say thank you to all of you who contributed and who participated and also congratulations to all those who won those fabulous prizes. Thank you very much. So we want to say special congratulations to Jackie and Michael. Can you please stand? You know them, right? Yes. Very good. Jackie and Michael celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary on the 30th of March. Congratulations. So if you need any tutorials on marriage, you got them, okay? Sixty years, yeah. Sixty, sixty years. So it's sixty years of marriage. I am very sure it's not been sixty years of smiles. <laughs> so that's why I say if you need tutorials, they will offer it. Beautiful. That's a powerful tip for every relationship. Never let the sun go down on your anger. Never let the sun go down on your anger. On anything you have against one another, never let the sun go down. Ephesians chapter 4. I've forgotten the verse, but Ephesians chapter 4. You got it? Because if the sun goes down, you sleep over it, the devil is going to wake you up at night, and the devil is going to water it, manure it, nurture it. And by the time it's 7 o'clock in the morning, you're going to act it out. And there's going to be fire on the mountain. Run, run, run. <laughs> so thank you very much. Congratulations. Jackie was one of the people, she had done many things in the parish, but she was one of the people that started the, the tea and coffee on Sunday morning, and I think on Tuesday then. So today we are inviting everybody to a fabulous tea and coffee in the hall. If you have never joined us, join us today because of Jackie and because of Michael. Jackie is an OBE, so even the king knows her. So. <laughs> so, thank you very much. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's celebration and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten son endow you with the price of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down. Be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. The Holy Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and save the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Our final hymn is 770.
Let my 